So, good morning. I'm Phil, and this is Alan from Vespa Technologies. Um, Vespa Technologies are a data center infrastructure specialist. Um, you may have noticed that um, Alan and I are also brothers from the, the same clothes that we wear and the same hairstyle that we sport as well. So um, we've been working together in and around servers um, for around 20 years now. And uh, today we'd like to share some of that experience with you uh, and talk about why we believe that open hardware is the perfect match for integrated cloud solutions. So in the early days, um, we worked very much with what we'd probably call today as vendor locked in or traditional hardware solutions, um, OEM server brands. And um, looking back, I remember being a meet in a meeting with our bank and um, this was just about the time when public cloud was coming to the market. And they asked us, do you see the cloud as a threat to your business? Um, I don't think they knew what cloud was really at that point. We probably didn't that much either. But uh, we, we didn't see cloud as being a threat to the business. We actually saw it as an opportunity. Um, it was a massive centralization of IT. And we thought it gave us the opportunity to go and tend for and win uh, larger contracts. Not with the, the sort of the very biggest public cloud service providers like AWS, um, but the, uh, the, the sort of competitors to AWS who were specializing or um, competing basically on price or some, some other sort of specialization. Um, so um, what, we, uh, what we realized is that um, we should talk to those guys and, and offer our services to them. And um, in order for those companies to be able to compete with the public service providers, they needed to run their uh, data center infrastructure in the same way as the giants were running their infrastructure. So we did our research and um, we came across something called uh, the Open Compute Project. Um, and we met with some OCB ambassadors, um, John LeBand, Steve Helvey, and we have uh, Lace is, is here today and going to speak next more about the Open Compute Project. And um, they very much welcomed us into the open compute community and they were really helpful with making introductions to other community members and to some of the um, server manufacturers within that community as well. So since that day the open compute project has shaped the direction of our business you know and the principles of open compute are very much um, you know the the ideals and the, the ideology which we, we, we strive to, to to work with today. So what is the Open Compute Project? Um, so much like open source for, for hardware, the Open Compute Project is all about collaboration and sharing ideas for innovation in hardware. So I've taken the stated mission from the OCP webpage. The Open Compute Project is a collaborative community focused on redesigning hardware technology to efficient, efficiently support the growing demands on compute infrastructure. Okay. So where did it come from? So Open Compute was an initiative started by Facebook um, in 2011. And the reason Open Compute came about was that um, at that time, Facebook um, were managing in infrastructure on a scale which had never been seen before. So millions of photos and, media and videos meant the scale of their compute and storage requirements uh, required a solution that was meant to build to scale out rather than scale up. Um, so, for example, a traditional storage appliance with capacity limits and performance that drops off as you increase capacity demands on it is no, not, not going to be appropriate for someone like Facebook. Um, traditional solutions that were available at the time were inefficient, both from a cost and sustainability perspective. So just a silly example, um, if you're buying 50,000 servers and they all have an embedded NIC that you're not using on them, then that becomes massively inefficient, both from a cost perspective and also to power that as well, which uh, you know, also leads to a, a TCO inefficiency. So um, Facebook needed their service to deliver exactly what they needed, no more and no less. And so they set about to redesign servers. Um, and a small team was put together to design their own data center infrastructure. But instead of taking the existing designs that were on the market from traditional OEMs at the time, they started with a blank piece of paper and they sought to just design what they perceived to be the most efficient hardware solutions at the time. 
Um, they, didn't, uh, they didn't go to the traditional server OEMs at the time. They went direct to the Taiwanese manufacturers, creating supply chain efficiency. So people like uh, WeWin, um, Quanta, uh, Giga Computing, those sorts of people. So essentially they were cutting out the, the OEM tax. And the server designs were and are published on the OCP marketplace uh, on the website. So any organization can go onto the OCP um, webpage, they can download the server spec, they can take that to a, a server manufacturer and they can build those services for themselves. So what this does is it creates healthy competition um, for the manufacturing of those products and, and, and keeps costs down. So the result of the new designs were a huge improvement in efficiency. So uh, you can see the start of the slide that the, the, the Facebook Oregon data center um, achieved a 1.07 PUE um, and the in industry average at the time was 1.9. Um, Mark Zuckerberg went on record in saying that OCP had, had saved the organization billions um, and that was the massive benefit of it. So the, the Open Compute project was born um, other organizations were invited to join, collaborate and contribute, contribute their own innovation to the uh, Open Compute project and some early members are on on the, uh, on the slide there, uh, Goldman Sachs, Rackspace and Intel. Um, today there's you know, much more, um, including Vespa Technologies and Sardina as well. Um, I'm going to pass over to Alan now, he's going to tell you a little bit more about the specifics of OCP servers um, and how they're different to conventional IT. Thank you, Phil. Thank you. So um, they say a picture paints a thousand words and we thought that the quickest way to give you a, uh, an overview of OCP hardware was to show you a, uh, a short video, which I'm hoping is going to um, play when we uh, go on to the next slide. Um, this video was shot at uh, Vespa Technologies over the course of a few days. It's a time lapse, and it shows us building a fully integrated OCP rack from the ground up. It's immediately obvious that the OCP rack is physically very different to a traditional 19-inch rack. The main reason for this is because OCP servers do not have their own power supplies. Power is delivered to them centrally using power shelves and the bus bar system. The main reason for this, um, which is visible at the rear of the rack, sorry. This is more efficient as larger power supplies and DC power can be used. There are no mounting pillars, which improves rack density. Servers are mounted side by side in the cubby system, which splits power drawn from the central bus bar to the servers inside. The OCP servers themselves are typically stripped back to include the minimum material and technical specification to perform the task required, and this reduces cost. The server itself and all of the internal assemblies can be maintained without tools. This is a fundamental tenant of OCP. Standard switches are used with conversion shelves to mount them. All I.O. is front of rack for ease of access. Coming up is a good view of the bus bar and the cable that splits power to each server in the cubby. You may also notice the large fans. This is a very deliberate design feature as large fans spin more slowly and require less energy to provide cooling. As you can see, the rack can be shipped fully integrated, providing you have a very large crate and a forklift, of course. <laughs> if you could just bear with me while we deliver this to site. It's a pretty challenging uh, shot, that. I remember the day thing on the bridge, trying to capture that one. Just swap mics, just in case that one stopped working. Okay, thank you. No problem. It must be carefully offloaded. That's better and uh, it can then be rolled into the data hole. This particular rack was shipped to a data center called KO Data, which is um, an OCP ready facility just north of London. Uh, the customer concern really loves this service as uh, it allows them to deploy the entire rack remotely. Uh, we've also delivered systems to, to Frankfurt uh, and to New York in this manner, and in both instances, our customer has never actually visited the facility. Overall, the value in OCP is not based on one single feature. I've really only scratched the surface here. There's, you know, there's a whole uh, 
raft of technical features and benefits to, you know, to talk about in more detail. Um, but it's really very much based around total cost of ownership. OCP will consume less power than traditional hardware, but there is also huge value in its ease of maintenance when physically managing large quantities of systems. Here I, uh, I wanted to share a bit of a more balanced view on OCP, um, which is based on our experience in the market. Uh, it's true that there are many advantages to using OCP, but as with anything that disrupts the status quo, there's going to be a few hurdles. Uh, for example, not every data center or co-location facility is going to be able to support OCP. The racks are really heavy when they're fully populated, over a ton in many cases, and this can be an issue for raised flooring. Not every data center will be able to provide the power density to the rack required to really benefit from the power and cooling efficiencies operated by OCP. And simple things like door heights can be a problem, as the racks are tall. Steps are, of course, a major problem for rolling racks. Uh, the facility needs to have ramps everywhere, and so facility selection is really, uh, really important. Things are maturing in this area, though, and uh, the Open Compute Project themselves are, are helping to broaden adoption by certifying OCP-ready facilities like Kadata that can accommodate OCP racks, and these can be found on the facility section of the OCP website. Um, another challenge is that the ODM vendors who manufacture OCP are not as sophisticated as the traditional OEMs with regards to documentation. Typically, they're really fantastic at the hardware design and manufacture part of the process, but they're not so hot with their marketing. You should not expect to lay your hands on an OCP quick spec, for example, like you might do with a HP server. This can make it a bit harder um, to work independently with your own infrastructure, and the ODM vendors may not have the focus to support the smaller projects. They are all about supplying hyperscale with OCP. This is where specialists like Vespa come in, as we have the experience to help with these kind of challenges. The reality is that OCP is not for every business. And to be completely frank, the lion's share of the hardware that we supply is not full-blown OCP. But despite this, OCP is hugely important for our business. This is not only because open hardware underpins our ideology, but also because of the influence that OCP has had on the wider market. OCP is used by the largest consumers of IT in the world. These companies are driving hardware innovation. And many of the features and benefits of OCP have trickled down into industry standard 19-inch servers, manufactured and brought to market by the same ODMs that build OCP for hyperscale. The OCP network card is a great example of this, trickle down. The OCP NIC was born in the Open Compute Project and allows users greater choice and flexibility of network port rather than it being a fixed feature of the motherboard that cannot be changed. We're now on version 3, and this latest design allows users to change the network card without even having to open the server lid. The OCP slot is now ubiquitous and will be found in almost every latest generation server today, and the OCP project is there to thank for that. Essentially, OCP has been a huge catalyst for the commodity server or white box market, as it made the ODM vendors aware that they didn't need to sit behind an OEM anymore. They could bring their own brands to market. They do this in a much more open way. Customers are free to use industry standard components rather than being restricted to predefined price books provided by the OEM. The supply chain is also streamlined, as Phil mentioned earlier, by removing the OEM and in many cases the distribution tier, both of which remove layers of margin. Pricing in this market is not only lower but also more transparent. It works on the basis of cost up rather than working backwards from uh, an artificial list price down. And as commodity components can be used, there is no lock-in. There is always competition which ensures fair pricing. These systems make up the vast majority of the hardware that we supply and where we are seeing the most adoption of open infrastructure. I'm now going to pass you back to Phil, who's just going to pick up uh, a little bit on the, the usage of these systems. I think this one's there. Uh, just working. keep your eye on the time. Yeah, you can, you can see it because it's facing us, but there's a clock here that uh, has, a, has a running clock. Um, okay, so now we know what OCP is um, and 
what open hardware is. So open hardware being the ODM direct uh, non-OEM servers. Um, we thought we'd come back to the title of this keynote, which is open hardware for integrated cloud solutions. And, and why is the reason hardware is particularly well suited to cloud pl pl platforms? So the reason we believe this is the case is because the data center is now software defined. So platforms like OpenStack scale by deploying additional nodes into the cluster, um, which is often coupled with storage like Ceph, which is also built to scale out by just adding additional nodes. The cluster is very much managed by the cloud platform software now, and the nodes are managed by Linux tooling. That means the hardware is more commoditized, but it doesn't mean it's any less important. The hardware needs to be carefully designed to support the software and to ensure a good balance of performance and cost which is where taking advantage of the benefits Alan has discussed comes in. This is where the ODMs really excel. They specialize in server design and have a much wider range of servers available. So, for example, if you're building a very deep storage solution that needs three and a half inch capacity drives, it's a very different server to a compute node. Um, so the benefit by not depending on proprietary hardware and software solution is users are able to pick the server and the design which is most suitable to the requirements of the cloud platform which they're using. So I'm not going to spend too much time on this slide as we, uh, we're running out of time, but we've, we've plotted um, some of the uh, well-known vendors in the market today on a scale of vendor locked in, thanks Alan, mm -hmm. um, on the left-hand side to uh, open on the right-hand side, so you'll see on the right-hand side uh, it's like a journey to open compute. And you'll see Fisher West is plotted in there, in and amongst the ODM server vendors, um, which you know, is why we believe it's such a great match for open hardware. Um, I thought I'd finish by quickly talking about how Vespa work with Sardina, and I think Ken has already um, discussed this a little bit. Um, but as they're our host, I wanted to include it in our presentation too. Um, so, Sardinus Fish OS is very quick to deploy. Um, I'm witness to the fact that um, Ken and his team can stand up a, uh, a full private cloud, uh, fully featured within a couple of days. But we wanted to make this even simpler for, for customers. And as Ken discussed, what we've uh, collaborated to do is present customers with a turnkey solution, um, which gives them all of the benefits of a traditional appliance with hardware and software re-aggregated, um, but also with the benefits of open hardware and open software. So you get the, um, the cost point which Ken has talked about in his first point. So our conclusion on that basis is that um, open hardware, whether that be ODM Direct, 19-inch um, traditional servers, or open compute, um, like the, the rack which Alan showed, is the perfect match for uh, integrated cloud solutions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Can you hear me? I'm not going to ask um, very complicated questions. We don't have a lot of time, but there's a very good one from the audience, which is how do you overcome scepticism about this open hardware approach? And I'd like to add to that, um, have you got any numbers on like the cost savings that people achieve or any other um, total cost of ownership benefits that yeah. help overcome that scepticism? So I think the, the first thing with which we're very used to as a business is running a lot of proof of concepts. So um, organisations typically want to try before they buy. Um, so um, we have um, a fleet of, of hardware uh, which we're able to either set up in our own config center and um, they can install their, their cloud platform like Fish OS on that and test that. Or they could take you know, a, a small sort of um, demo cluster, cluster onto site uh, and try it on that basis as well. Um, but the, the great thing about a solution like Fish OS, as you know, is that it's very scalable. So people can start in a small way and, and sort of expand that customer, cluster as they grow more confident about it. Um, and what we generally find is that um, it's not an all or nothing thing with, with a lot of organizations. They will run a, a sort of private cloud solution, but they'll also have some use of public cloud as well. But as they get more confident, they start to migrate more and more services onto that platform. 
Um, so that addresses the, uh, the point of um, overcoming those skeptics. Um, I think in terms of cost, it, it very much depends on the configuration. So if you're, we're, we're not in the market of providing network service, you know, like um, for a couple of VMs to run a local office on. Um, you know, the, the OEMs have such large volumes on those styles of service um, that they, um, the cost point is, is particularly probably very aggressive. Um, and so there's probably not a great deal of cost savings there. We're, we're, where we're really sort of beneficial is in around the, the, the data center at, at scale. And so people are buying a lot of compute, a lot of storage, um, particularly high performance storage with things like NVMe in. That's where you'll see that there's massive markups uh, by the OEMs. And it's really difficult to quantify because you know, sometimes, sometimes the OEM will engage when they see the opp opportunity if it's a, a flagship brand and you know, perhaps they're, you know, they're missing um, numbers to, for the quarter and they're, you know, they're quoted companies and so they'll just take a deal just for the revenue of it. So sometimes we do see aggressive pricing come out of them. But I think the, the big benefit is that it's, it's that sort of that consistency of pricing and there's none of the um, games of playing of like, okay, you go from, you start here and then you end up here, um, as, well as, as well as the cost savings. I mean, there, you know, there's definitely cost savings to be had there as well. Great, great answers. A great presentation and uh, absolutely great to have you.